so now we want to look at the um, how we calculate this risk margin and what this risk margin is is the reward we need to pay an investor for taking the risk of uh, of put it of putting at our disposal the amount of the solvency capital requirement so if we briefly go back and look at the liability so what we're saying is we want we need a hundred and twenty pounds in our insurance company here ignoring the time value of money we need hundred and twenty pounds to be sure we can meet this liability the expected value of this liability is the hundred pounds that's our expected value but we need hundred and twenty pounds to make sure we can meet this liability how much uh, would an investor putting up this most of this twenty pounds want as an expected return in order to justify making the investment so let's think about what that means so we need hundred and twenty best estimate equals a hundred but the the value of the insurance company is um, so is the technical provisions which equals a hundred plus the risk margin so our investor is going to invest 20 minus the risk margin and his expected return is equal to the risk the risk margin and the standard deviation of the risk he is running is equal to 20 because the average is 100 and he's either going to be pay out 120 or 80 so the standard deviation of the risk is 100 so he his effectively equation of value is expected return over standard deviation of risk which equals risk margin divided by 20 and so we now in order to calculate what the risk margin is we need to think about what this uh, return per unit risk should be and to do that we need to try and find a market value of that well that's quite a difficult thing to do but for illustrative purposes we'll imagine that there are other insurance contracts out there where we know what the expected return is we know what the risk is and we know what the price is in which case we can then get a value of this expected return per per unit risk so I'll save this screen So supposing we already know that there are there are insurance contracts out there which will play plus a hundred or minus a hundred with probability fifty percent. And suppose the cost of insuring this equals 20 and then we'll put and we'll say this is on a 10-year time horizon for consistency so what that means is that the risk premium the insurer who is insuring this gets is 20 the risk they are running is 100 the standard deviation of the risk because it can either be 100 away from the average uh, positive or 100 away from the average negative. So that is our risk premium divided by our standard deviation of risk. 
which equals 0 0.2. So because we're assuming this is traded in the market and it costs £20, this insurance contract, we know we've got a market price for risk. So if we go back now and look at the original calc, we can see in the original calculation our expected return, our risk premium, divided by our risk was RM over 20. I'll just finish this calc off here, but we've got a market price of what this expected return over standard deviation of risk is of 0 0.2. So we can now solve that and risk margin over 20 equals 0 0.2. Therefore, risk margin is equal to 4. So that is a market way. It's a very simplified uh, illustration, but that is a way of getting a market price of risk from from the market. But you'll notice what I've done here. I've assumed that I know we need 120 pounds. Well, that's effectively the solvency capital requirement. But as we'll come on to see, we're actually going to work out the solvency capital requirement from the risk margin. So you actually get a circular argument, which has caused uh, uh, a lot of confusion in the industry. But for our purposes, uh, obviously, in this particular calculation, the solvency capital requirement is is clear. It's just the amount. It's the most amount of money you need. But in, in this case, we, we'd be able to work out that the risk margin is 4. So if we save that and open our stat one, in this case, now I ignored for the uh, risk margin calculus, I ignored the time value of money. So this is a slightly, uh, was well, the 82 pounds, 3 pence, has a time value of money in it. So the risk margin would actually be 4 divided by 1.02 to the power of 10. Okay, but we can see now we've got we've got the calculation of a best estimate of 82 pounds 3 pence and a calculation based on market values of uh, a risk margin. So that leaves us with the last two parts to to calculate which is the solvency capital requirement and the minimum capital requirement. Now the essence of the solvency capital requirement is we want to reduce the probability uh, of, of burning through this stack of capital down to the risk margin in a period of a year down to less than 1 in 200. Okay, and that's what we'll come on to in the next section of the lecture.